like to call to order the Tuesday, December 17th, 2019 meeting of the Iron County Board of Commissioners. This time I'd like to uh, ask everyone to please bow your head in a moment of silent prayer. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Jones, would you please review uh, the adjustments to the agenda? Yes, sir, Chairman Mallory. We have three adjustments. The first is the addition of closed session, under closed session, which is attorney client pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3. We have an addition under unfinished business, which is Bluefield Road proposal. And then an addition under new business, which is an update from Commissioner Robertson regarding the I-77 transportation update. Okay, is there any adju other adjustments to the agenda? Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Howe. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, there are no uh, special recognitions or awards this evening. Uh, item four, appointments before the board. We have two this evening. Uh, the first is a uh, request from Mr. Brian Duncan, who is the director of iCare Incorporated, to present the annual community services block grant anti-poverty program. So, Brian, please. Good evening and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Um, so, what we have uh, shared with you uh, in your packet uh, represents um, a proposal for year three of three. Um, and it's uh, the plan is is pretty much the same as we have uh, have presented in the prior two years. Um, so I don't want to necessarily bore you with the details of, of, but most of it is focused on workforce development, uh, education, training, and that type of thing. What I do want to share with you um, very briefly uh, are just some of our outcomes um, over the past uh, year and cum cumulatively um, the past four years. So. Last year with these uh, funds, we were able to um, move 32 families out of poverty. Over the four years, we've moved 100 families out of poverty. Um, 38 families gained employment uh, through these funds last year. Over the past four years, uh, we've placed 107 um, people in employment. Um, last year's average wage rate was $11.13 an hour. Um, very proud of the fact that uh, we saw an 82% reduction in government assistance from these families that we served, and that's by far, uh, far exceeds anything that we've seen in the past few years, and I do believe that that is a function of a good economy and being able to get people into uh, better paying jobs. Um, one thing that we found out, um, and we've known this for some time, and I think we recognized it last year, uh, that it's sometimes easier to hear from those who have been served than just to listen to me repeat what you've probably already read. So um, if you will indulge me, I want to introduce Shelton Moore, and he can introduce uh, a couple of our uh, clients, that, uh, former clients that we have with us tonight, and they're going to take a few minutes and share. All right, so good evening. Shelton Moore, Family Support Services Director. Um, again, as mentioned, a lot of great successes. We have two of the many who are able to benefit from the services of Community Services Block Grant. If you would allow me to introduce Shanika Turner. She'll be our first to come up. She was able to take advantage of entrepreneurship, and I'll allow her to tell her story. Thank you. 
Good evening. My name is Shanika Turner. I am the founder and executive director of Aftershock Youth Empowerment. We are a bullying prevention, intervention, nonprofit organization. Um, with the Community Service Block Grant, I, uh, with Eye Care, we were actually able to go through their very first entrepreneurial small business opportunity program. Um, as we won first place in that program, it was a 10 week um, program that taught every aspect of entrepreneurship, um, helping to uh, form an idea and get it implemented. Uh, we won a $6,000 grant. With that $6,000 grant, we are out in the Harmony area. We have a partnership with Iredale Statesville City Schools uh, to teach bullying prevention and intervention services. We just received a $5,000 grant from the ABC board to continue those services. And, um, and we're in the forerunning for the United Ways Love United grant. Um, and with that grant money, it will be used to actually uh, start a, a library and empowerment center at Success Institute Charter School. But with the, with the program that I went through with iCare, it literally was able to give us this concept and that extra push that we need um, to be able to carry an idea over into full entrepreneurship. So this, the, the grant has definitely, uh, was very impactful in launching Aftershot Youth Empowerment here in Iredale County. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to put a face with a successful you know, number. Yeah. You know. Yes, sir. Um, any questions? I'm sorry. Any questions for Shanika? I'll just say that, you know, I, I attended the kickoff to that entrepreneurship <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, uh, class, and um, it was full, uh, full of uh, very motivated uh, folks uh, looking at many different kinds <coughs> of businesses, and it's just great to see that uh, uh, empowerment that uh, you brought to the table and, and help people navigate and set a vision and then put uh, legs on that vision. So. Great job. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, the next participant, um, Raphael Tomlin. Um, so we know unemployment rates are extremely low. I think they've crept up a little bit, about 3.4 now percent. Um, so we've noticed that the individuals coming through our doors have changed over time. Um, hardest to serve at times. Some dealing with various backgrounds, impediments to employment, and so forth. And Raphael was able to come through, receive some soft skills training. He's now gainfully employed, and I'll turn it over to Raphael Tomlin, and he can tell you a little bit more about his situation. Good evening. Good evening. Well, my name is Raphael Tomlin, as he said. But um, with the help of our care, I do have a full-time job, as he said. And the first job that I like going to every day. So a little bit about me is, like he said, people have backgrounds. I have a background. I have a bad background. But through God and through help from others, I'm not that person anymore, you know? I care. It's one of the people, excuse me, one of the organizations that's really been, by my, been behind me. Like, I've been home since I did five and a half years in prison. Came home. I've been home since August of last year. I mean, 2018, excuse me. And every job I had was either temporary or temporary. <laughs> <laughs> so it's real, it's real relieving to have a full-time job now that I have a child on the way <laughs> and I have a fiance and there's other things that they've been helping me with like just mentally like just somebody to if I need something or just to talk to just call and it's you know it's not it's not rehearsed it's genuine it helps that's all I got to say 
unless you have any questions. I just, I just want to say, keep the background in the background, focus on now forward. Be an example, congratulations on the child. Keep God in your mind and first and foremost in your heart. Thank you for your effort and your attitude. You can control that. Nobody controls that for you. So keep looking up. You keep looking up. Proud of you. Thank you. I've got a question. First of all, a statement. When, when you were describing I care, you said the, the people, then you went back and you said the organization. Congratulations. If, if somebody th thinks of your organization as as people, that's the connection that he made. Boy, that's that's pretty powerful. I have to ask you because um, it, it sounds like you went through a period where where things didn't work out the, the way you wanted to. What was it? C can you can you summarize it a little bit? What was it about what I care did or what you did? How did that? How did they get a connection with you that, that ended up in a positive result? Can you share a little bit of that? Does that is that a fair question? It all boils down to interaction. <clears throat> they actually interact with us, not just people. You know how you have these organizations where you a call, but and like something may it just, it could be something that's just on my heart, like some, maybe something is bothering me that day. I can call the I can call them, and they will actually genuinely take time of, out of their life, not just their day, their lives, because that's what it is, you know, and talk with us about it. It's a connection. It's like, it's not just, I don't know, it's interaction. Like, they really interact with us. They're not. You say you like your job? Yes, sir. What do you do now? I build doors. You build? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good. So I work for um, WDM Warehouse. Okay. Over here in Statesville, off of uh, <clears throat> Northside Drive, and I work for Sharon and Charles Tucker. Great people, like my bosses. It's only us. It's me, another guy that's going through eye care, and those two, and like they interact with us. It's like. It's like family. That's what that's what I'm that's what it all boils down to. I care is like family. And the job that they put me in has me feel like family. It's like I'm going to help my family every day. That's why I like my job. What kind of doors? Any door. Interior, exterior. Oh, whatever okay. you want. Cool. Very, very, very good story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Raphael. Uh, yeah, that, that, those, those are just uh, we appreciate y'all standing up and sharing your stories because other people need to be inspired by that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we're not all dealt the same cards, but we're all in the same game. And so you've got to be intentional about, you know, uh, changing in some cards that were dealt and, and drawing better cards. And that just uh, that didn't hand it out. That's something that you have to, you know, be in the game to uh, to participate in, and so regardless of you know uh, what's in the past, as Commissioner Halp said, you know, uh, focus on the future. And there's always consequences, but you know you can overcome those consequences. And uh, so you all are great examples of uh, you know taking it to another level. And I care is a great organization uh, like family uh, that uh, truly does care. Uh, I mean, they live up to the name of their organization. <laughs> yep. So uh, we just really appreciate, uh, and we appreciate the metrics. You know, it, it, it's one thing to see, you, know, you think about 32 people this year, 170 some odd. That's not just one person. That affects entire families. Uh, it, it proves to be an example to others. Uh, it really is a power of multiplication. And, and you measure victory uh, one person at a time, but that one person can make a difference for everyone they come in contact with in their circle of uh, family or friends that uh, they influence. So, uh, you know, a lot of the benefit of what 
eye care as an organization brings to the table is not just in their immediate results, but the results that continue to flow from that over time. Okay. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity, and we appreciate your support always. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And Merry Christmas. <laughs> Now have a uh, presentation by Bradley Johnson, who is ICANT's director, on a service update for FY2020. Good evening. Uh, tonight I come before you with a service update for our FY2020 uh, fiscal year. Um, as you know, ICATS is an enterprise fund. And so uh, one of our requirements of being a department is to have a balanced budget. Um, Ardo County provides about 3% of ICATS total budget. Um, and we, ICATS replies or uh, relies on operating funds from the state and federal level. Uh, about 50% of our operating funds come from grants. The other 50% comes from uh, contract revenue with uh, human service agencies or assisted living facilities um, in the community. Um, we have uh, one program that we have been uh, relying on for a number of years. It's uh, called JARC, Job Access and Reverse Commuting. Uh, it was a program that was originally uh, supposed to be done away with in 2015, um, but we were able to identify small pockets of money along uh, different agencies, transportation agencies across the country that had applied for the money and not been able to spend it. So we were able to get about 500,000 additional dollars to then be able to double that to be able to provide right at a million dollars of additional work transportation. Um, like I was reminded earlier, uh, any time that you have uh, grant funding, you have to be prepared to either stop the service or make changes, you know, on the fly. And uh, that's kind of what has happened at this point uh, with the JARC funding. We, we've known that that funding was going to expire at some point, but we wanted to continue to help individuals as long as we could um, with the hopes of other funding sources coming available. Um, we've been able to shift uh, a fair amount of the individuals that ride the service. I think there's 13 individuals now that do not have a funding source. Um, we've been able to shift the other ones to either Traveler's Aid, which is a new program that we applied for last year, um, either the 5310, Section 5310 for the rural area, or find a human service agency to, to pick up um, their trips for them. Um, we've also reached out to some of the employers uh, for them to pick up the cost of the trip for getting the individual to work, and uh, so that will be a win-win for, for both of them. Um, and, but uh, you know, currently we we are having to make an adjustment in order to make sure that we do have a balanced budget. Um, one of the other grants that has not came through for us is a 5310 urbanized operating grant. Um, CATS is the designated recipient for those funds. They have not awarded 17, 18, or 19's allotment of funding. Um, we so that puts us in a bind of not being able to bill. Um, any of those grants for that funding. It's about $365,000 for the year is what we are um, anticipating, you know, running. But, um, you know, the funds can be retroactive, uh, but it depends on, on Charlotte City Council for the approval of that. And since we don't have anything uh, approved from them yet, we just, we feel that we need to be able to have this service reduction in order to... Um, City Council has to approve or CRTPO? Uh, the Charlotte City Council has to approve the the date of the retroactive date of the the award. Um, we are we have it on the agenda in January to go before the CRTPO to hopefully be able to get it um, the budget uh, announced but approved at the same time so then it can go to the state and then hopefully be approved from the, at the state level at the Board of Transportation in March um, and if that's the case then you know we don't know how far back the City of Charlotte will um, date it. 
I would think that they will go back to the first of this physical year, but we, they're just, there's so many unknowns at this time. We just, uh, we, you know, we're just trying to make sure we, we're able to cover ourselves. Um, These are funds that have already been appropriated and approved by the federal government. Uh, they, they are. And they are, they are generated by the population um, and then also by service perimeters uh, from services that we've provided in the years past. Do, and for the years that they were not dispersed, those funds don't lapse. Uh, they they can lapse. They're the the award year, and then you have up to three years of an extension. Okay. But um, you're not guaranteed those three years, and so it's uh you know you once the war, the funds are awarded, when you do have to do a period of performance extension. You know, I've only had a couple instances where they haven't been extended, um, but it is possible that the, the feds could say that the program, you know, isn't being utilized and that those funds could be used somewhere else. So when is the time when you would request that extension? After it's gone through this initial process that you described, then the city of Charlotte makes a determination about retroactivity? And then we have to request an extension. Um, the, the city of Charlotte requests uh, the extension on on everyone's behalf in the CRTPO, um, so they make that request to the FTA. And so usually their request just uh, says that you know the program hasn't they haven't started one year's funding because they wanted to expend the previous years. And uh, but we're expending our money. Our we. Grant. We are, and that's what we're expending our money faster than, than they are because they are very limited on what they can use that money for. Um, they, they do not provide door-to-door uh, -door paratransit service with that funding. It's, uh, they're in a different category in the federal level. So most of their 5310 urbanized money goes to human service agencies, um, Mecklenburg Association for the Blind, um, Disability Rights, and some of the other organizations which aren't providing the volume of trips that we are, um, and they're getting a larger allotment of funds, um, and so they're, they're not expending them at the rate that we are. Does the CRTPO, when they take action in January, do they make a recommendation as to the retroactive uh, date? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if they, if they do. Um, I know that in the previous uh, presentations to the CRTPO, when the... Um, when the split letter would be uh, presented to show the distribution of funds, uh, they, they would have a, a start date that they would want the funds to be approved by or start retroactive for, but then it still has to go before city council to approve that. So as we discussed in the pre-agenda, will you work expeditiously with Beth to get Ken everything he needs to either make a presentation, see our PTO, and or if the chairman on behalf of the board needs to send something to the city council, uh, whatever we need to do, we need to get on top of this before those funds lapse. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I can I can definitely do that. And, uh, I guess if Bob Cook sure. will, I mean, if he makes the recommendation, since it's coming from the CRTPO, which is 48 percent share Charlotte, <clears throat> that that should go through. But it needs to be specifically identified, and not just assume that they are going to go back and capture all three years. Yes, and, and that's what, so we, we have in our request to CATS for it to be in effect uh, July 1 of FY20. And so um, it would, uh, that's, that's when we were able to, I mean, we've been providing those trips with the understanding that we knew the money was coming and we knew it would come some point here in this year. But um, it's, you know, we just want to make sure we've got all our bases covered. And if, and if all those funds were distributed, appropriate time. How much gas does that put in our tank? How far can we go delivering the service level that, you know, probably that you've, you've altered somewhat and reduced its footprint? We probably need to meter it down uh, and, and that's, as much as we can. That's, that's what we've been doing as, as metering it down. Um, one of the things that we've ran into is that whenever we, we have a service reduction for 5310 trips, so that's for individuals elderly and disabled, if we have it where we limit the number of personal trips that the individuals start having, we see that the number of medical trips that they start having go up. 
because their personal trips might be to go get a haircut today and then they want to go on Friday to the grocery store and to pick up their pharmacy. Well, if we say they only have two personal trips a week, they combine. It, yeah, it's it um it it ends up, you know, they they start missing one thing and a lot of times one of the things they miss is the pharmacy or, you know, um in, Different, different things of going to the grocery store. And since we do have bag requirements on our vehicles, you know, if there's a two-bag requirement, they can only, you know, bring what they can carry. If you're only going to the grocery store once a week to get what you can carry, that's, you know, that's difficult. I mean, even to feel, feed a single person. So, um, you know, that's what it's, we're in that dilemma where if we, can, if we have a service reduction for 5310 personal trips, the number of medical trips goes up. So it's really not um, you know, I, I don't want to be the one to decide if someone can go to their heart doctor or their kidney doctor. You know, I, I, so, um, you know, we, we allow all medical trips, and those medical trips end up, um, you know, keep piling up one after the next. Um, so, I mean, we, we are trying to have somewhat of a service reduction, um, but we are, I mean, we've been working with Council on Aging for, you know, trying to abide by some of their policies that they do. But, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very hard when you're... Are the medical trips typically covered by Medicaid? Uh, no, most of the 5310 trips, the medical trips, none of those would be covered by Medicaid. And uh, the Medicaid does not pay for transportation, um, just uh, Medicare. And so... Or, sorry, backwards. Uh, we mentioned earlier you're an enterprise fund, so like the article today in the paper was a little misleading, thinking that was a sole source reduction of your total funding. The county's funding for all your operations is very minimal, 2%, something around that nature. So we really need to pursue that funding that's already been allocated and somebody's holding it in their bank account and the bureaucracy's broken down. So if you get Commissioner Robertson uh, what he needs, I th he let him get on it. I think he can help you. And that's what and Union County is also working with us to get the, these funds um, allocated. But uh, Union County is not as as uh, worried about them immediately because they get almost a million dollars a year from the county. And so, um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of uh, discrepancy there. So, you know, we're, we're trying to take the lead on this because it, it is affecting our service that we're having to do. And to be able to continue to provide the 5310 medical trips and the personal trips, we're having to have a service reduction of our fixed route services. And those are services that ICATS um, funds with the help of the municipalities, uh, Statesville and Mooresville. Um, there also was a, uh, a commitment with Mitchell Community College to provide the community connection between the two campuses, um, but they have pulled the funding on that. Uh, it's, uh, it was about $60,000 a year. That $60,000 a year was then used as a match for, for operating funds to be able to continue that service. Um, you know, we, we felt that the service is valuable enough to keep it keep it going. I mean, like the gentleman, you know, that was here before. I mean, you know, that's what these, these people that you're getting out here, you're getting them to work, you're getting them to education. The last thing you want to do is, you know, pull their legs out from under them, which, you know, could be the transportation that they're needing. But uh, the, so the proposal or the information here is, is showing about a uh, $260,000 um, savings with having the service reduction. Um, it's taking the Mooresville to a four-day-a-week service as opposed to a five-day-a-week, um, and then the community connection to a four-day-a-week service as opposed to five days, and uh, just reducing the, the, the total overall trips that they have. So um, the service will be a, still be available, but that uh, might not be available at the times they want to go, but um, hopefully we are able to, you know, to, to work with most people to, you know, to get them where they need to go. How many runs did you uh, cut back on for the Ireland Express down the interstate? Um, we cut back on one one run, the, the last run at night. Uh, it is our our least popular run. I think we, right now we have like six individuals that are riding. They they work at Amazon, and so um, they they work a 12-hour shift. So we take them down at night and pick them up in the morning. Um, and we're uh, they were going to see if they would be able to get their shift potentially changed to work a, like a 13-hour shift to, um, you know, multiple days. So then they could just have to Uber back up, you know, one day a week or something. You, you don't have any issues with being charged to use the uh, toll road? 
Uh, we get a bill every month, but um, you know we don't pay it. It's uh, I mean we have a uh, we have a transponder. We're supposed to be exempt. Um, in the original agreement, uh, the attorney put in there that it was for public transportation could use it free of charge. But then they only listed cats as public transportation. So we had to um, to assure them that we were public transportation. And so we have transponders in all of our vehicles. Uh, cats still does not have the transponders. They are just, um, you know, I guess running them uh, in the toll lanes, just uh, no transponders, just being rebel, I guess. But uh, uh, Put a piece of tape over the eye. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I know that uh, we we get uh, we get we get you know it's probably 30 pages in on the bill. Um, it has every time that we pass through it um, with a picture of the tag. A lot of times, so it's you know it's you know, they're wasting their money sending it to us. I mean, we we have the exemption, but um, you, you need to talk to Warren Cooksey about that. Uh, we have we we sent him a copy of our uh, of our invoice because it said that it was delinquent. And that uh, services would or our vehicles could be stopped, so um, yeah. we forwarded it's that. Well to aware him. of this issue. Of yeah. All right. Any questions? No. Oh, thank you very much. Well, you're doing a great job uh, running a bus system. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Okay, uh, this evening, there are no action items associated with uh, that this evening. Um, no public hearings are, have been scheduled. Uh, item eight is administrative matters that are appropriate for uh, our consent agenda. Our consent agenda, which is rather lengthy this evening, is uh, mostly technical issues brought by staff, uh, which we have uh, heard at the pre-agenda meeting, which is open to the public and which is recorded. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Ms. Jones, if you would review uh, or summarize uh, all of those that we did have a uh, consent to uh, have a consent motion. Absolutely. Thank you, Chairman Mallory. And, and I do want to mention the, that included in there, before you get to it, is the uh, uh, match for a, an NC Department of Transportation Division of Aviation grant. Uh, and I do want to recognize uh, Mr. Steve Johnson, uh, former chairman and member of this commission, who now serves on the Statesville City Council uh, and uh, for many years has been on the airport commission. So uh, before we start the, through the litany, is there anything you'd like to share on that issue? Just. Just a couple of things. <clears throat> since we, since the city of states will purchase the FBO earlier this year, uh, our biggest problem is if somebody shows up with the jet today, we don't have any hangar space left. Uh, with the grant that we got from the state, which will be the ramp area up on the southeast taxiway now, the state has agreed to fund an entire new hangar. That's something that they told us earlier. We don't do vertical projects, but they came back and gave us the money. So we can move Victory Air off the South Corporate Taxiway up to there, and that'll open up some hangar space. But we've got more requests for hangar space even after that, then we'll have a place to put them. So we've got a good problem to have. And uh, I just want to thank you folks. If, if it weren't for the assistance you give us, we wouldn't have that problem, but it is a good problem to have, and uh, we're under discussions now of how to increase that southeast corporate tax area even further in the future. But uh, thank you very much for your help, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, and thank you for allowing Mr. Halp to serve with us. He's a valuable asset to our airport commission, very supportive of what we do. Well, I think that the, uh, the results of uh, a number of grant requests to the, the federal government uh, speak for themselves in terms of 100%. Uh, funding for the runway extension and the uh, taxiway, uh, and the, this is this is a uh, project to provide lighting on the taxiway. So um, it's a, attracting uh, uh, significant uh, numbers of uh, clients and, and uh, personal property that goes on the personal property tax rolls. And when you have a, a jet, uh, that's not a small amount of money. 
Well, that's right, and uh, those jets show up, and they don't bring school children, so y'all don't have to worry about that. But uh, That's 50% of our budget. Well, that, that's, that's right, and uh, I just want to say we got a couple of uh, big projects we're working on out there. One of them's probably in the distant future, but uh, we'll be back, and one of them other than maybe a portion of the incentive, I don't think it'll be out of any pocket money for you, but I think it'll be beneficial to your tax base and uh, help you pay the bills around here. But we appreciate your support, Mr. Chair. Oh, and I think, I think Commissioner Howe mentioned earlier that uh, uh, we need a little uh, foreshadowing of uh, those uh, projects uh, so that we can put them into our CIP and our economic development uh, projections over the years as opposed to being pop-up kind of things just um, materialize. We'll, we'll do a better job of that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks. <coughs> Okay, Ms. Jones. Thank you, Chairman Mallory. The first item is a request from EMS for approval of budget amendment number 18 in the amount of $67,310 to use contingency funds to begin a community paramedicine program beginning in January of 2020. There was a request from emergency management for approval to apply for an emergency management performance grant in the amount of $35,000 to support personnel and operations. This is a no match grant. Is a request from emergency management for approval to apply for an annual tier two non-competitive grant in the amount of $1,000, which is also a no match grant, to be used to upgrade the existing identification card printer for accountability during incidents. A request from emergency management for approval to apply for a North Carolina tier two competitive grant in the amount of $10,000, again a no match grant, to be used to conduct a multi-agency hazardous materials exercise at Statesville Regional Airport. A request from emergency management for approval of budget amendment number 16 to appropriate $26,000 fund balance in the countywide fire service district fund to replenish funds transferred between line items to cover postage cost for the all county fire tax district notice of public hearing and map that went out to 63,000 property owners and that was sent out Friday of last week. A request from the health department to write off uncollected patient account debt from 2016, the amount of $10,013.69, which is in compliant with the administrative code. And just to say that this number is down from 24,000 from last year. A request from the health department for approval of budget amendment number 17 for the fire prevention week grant in the amount of $400 for Safe Kids North Car from Safe Kids North Carolina, and this will be used to purchase bike helmets. A request from tax administration for denial of taxpayers' request for release and refund that does not meet the statutory requirements with the added note that the, le the letter will note that the denial is for this year's appeal, but he can apply for next year. A request from tax administration for approval of November refunds and releases. A request from the finance department for approval of budget amendment number 14 to transfer $106,840 from the capital improvement plan to the health care fund to cover the additional cost of the employee wellness clinic renovation. A request from the finance department for approval of low bidder and award of a contract to perform renovations and upfits to the second and fourth floors of the Iredell County Government Center South to add office space for the sheriff's office and social services with one um, amendment which is to remove the $9,000 for room 209, or excuse me, 2009, which is a private restroom. A request from the Finance Department for approval of an eight-year lease with the Department of Environmental Quality for 26,871 square feet of office space on the third and fourth floors of the Iredell County Government Center South. A request from the Finance Department for approval of Budget Amendment Number 15 to appropriate $73,511 in juvenile crime prevention funding for the Raise the Age initiative. A request from the Finance Department for adoption of a resolution calling, excuse me, that's held for the 7 o'clock, I apologize. A request from Administration for approval to expend $100,000 of economic development funds as a local match for a $2 million grant from the North Carolina Department of Transportation Division of Aviation to be used for taxiway lighting, which Councilman Johnson was just referring to. A request from administration for appointment of a delegate and alternate to the Central Carolina Council of Government Board of Delegates. The appointment is Commissioner Gene Halp and the alternate is Chairman James Mallory. Election of chair and vice chair, and that was agreed by consensus that the chair will remain 
uh, James Mallory and the vice chair will remain Tommy Bowles. A request from the clerk to the board for the approval of the minutes from the meetings on November the 15th and November the 19th, 2019. Is there any further discussion of the uh, consent items? Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Vice Chairman Bowles to uh, approve the consent agenda and uh, all the uh, constituent parts thereof. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we'll <clears throat> circle back to. Uh, a request of the Finance Department for adoption of a resolution calling for a bond referendum. Thank you. I'm asking tonight for the passage of a resolution calling for a bond referendum. This resolution uh, directs staff to, uh, to produce paperwork to the Elections Office dictating the time and date of the bond referendum, which is between 6.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, March 3rd. It also directs the clerk to the board to post a notice of the bond referendum that has to be in the paper at least 14 days before February 7th. It also indicates the form of the questions that must be put on the ballot, and that will also be sent to the elections office. And this is directing the clerk to make sure that this paperwork is in the elections office three days after your approval of this this evening. Is there, uh, are there any questions of uh, Ms. Cheek? Uh, as everyone will recall, we, this has been a process uh, that's been before us in one form or another for the last uh, two and a half months. There have been uh, two uh, public hearings. Uh, one, only one of which was required. And uh, we have uh, voted hitherto to uh, proceed forward. So I would ask uh, if there is a motion to approve a resolution calling for a bond referendum. But did we need exact wording for that? It, that? The wording that he used was all that was needed. That was it. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll ask again, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we call for a resolution of bond for a bond referendum for the March 3rd primary. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Howe. Any further discussion? Um, the, the wording that's going to be on the ballot, we will look at that first. That's We've included already, in this. It it's is included, included in your packet. We already approved that. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. We did it the same way. They did it the same way they did it in 2014 position-wise. Is that what you're referring to? I just want to make, you know, just okay. say, let's just put one last pair of eyes on it before it goes. Yeah. Because yeah. once it's on the ballot, if it's not worded properly, uh, that um, can be good. Well, look, yeah. at, look at that you're, when you're done and make sure you approve it as well. Our, and I will just say that our bond council assisted us in drafting that with all the requirements that we must make sure that we cover. Mm -hmm. and. I did ask if there's any way that we could simplify it, and the response that I received was no, not to be compliant with the law. So <laughs> um, I, I believe we simplified it as much as we can, um, and everything that is in there is what we're required to have in there according it's to bond counsel. Worded, then, some, they can actually pass the bond for Mitchell and not for the schools. That is correct, yes, they could. That's two separate. It <coughs> have to be two separate. It's, it has to be two separate questions. Yeah. Yes, correct. So, so we cannot go in there and use the word capacity bond on No. No, we just have to get the word out. Cook. We tried. All right. Yeah. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Cheek. And I know that's a lot of work that your staff has done and will do, uh, and certainly, uh, Appreciate. Uh, please convey our uh, appreciation to your staff for the. I will. Thank you very work. much. <clears throat> okay, we have uh, one announcement of a vacancy on a board or commission. That is uh, one announcement for the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. Uh, and we will, and we would ask uh, anyone that is interested uh, in serving in that capacity to please uh, check on our website. They can find a application and uh, submit that. We'll uh, be uh, reviewing that or reviewing applicants 
uh, at our next uh, scheduled uh, commissioner meeting in January. Item 10, appointments to boards and commissions. We have, uh, we have several. These really come in bunches like grapes. We put them on a six-month rotation, and, and there's a few outliers occasionally that pop up. But uh, in the main, they're uh, on six-month rotations as far as uh, announcements and appointments. Uh, so uh, first, we have uh, six appointments uh, to the Board of Equalization and Review. Uh, Ms. Jones, would you like to uh, name the individuals that have applied or volunteered to serve again? Absolutely. We have Mike Loftus, Hal Jolly, Mike Brotherton, Dan Howard, and Al Simmons that have all volunteered to serve again. And then we have uh, Ms. Jennifer Christian that has volunteered to serve for the first time as an alternate. Okay. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. We approve those, those uh, applicants and appreciate their willingness to serve. Uh, thank you. Motion by Commissioner Halp. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Oops, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, next, uh, the Board of Health, and I would defer to uh, Vice Chairman Bowles, since he is on the uh, Board of Health, to uh, lay out their recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We uh, have some very specific positions on here that are uh, based on their professional uh, qualifications. Uh, I would like to recommend uh, Dr. Weeks as the optometrist position, uh, Dr. Whitener as the veterinarian position, uh, Andrea Sherrill as the general public position. She is a registered dietitian since 1998 and has worked in a clinical hospice and community dietitian. Uh, family Consumer Science Agent for Idle County Cooperative Extension. Uh, those are the first-time appointments, and those that are willing to be reappointed to the Board of Health are Candace Reeves, pharmacist, uh, Ben Loftus, engineer, uh, Dr. Burgess, dentist, and Lisa Warren, nurse. And I would respectfully submit that slate for the upcoming appointments for Idle County Board of Health. Okay. Take that in the form of a motion? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously, and we appreciate everyone that uh, applied. Uh, there are more applicants than there are positions, and that's a good uh, sign of a, of a healthy, engaged uh, public, and we encourage all those folks to continue to scan the uh, opportunities and to uh, apply as well for those. Um, next, we have the Char Charlotte Regional Partnership uh, one appointment. Uh, Mr. Larry Schaefer has volunteered to serve again. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion um, by Commissioner Robertson. I'm sorry, just one point of clarification for the record, and I failed to catch this earlier, but they have updated their name to the Charlotte Regional, Regional Business Alliance. So okay. just for the record, that motion needs to, I know, the motion does need the appointment, we need to have the correct name in the appointment, I apologize. Okay, so the, the I'll take that as an amendment to the motion to uh, uh, Charlotte Regional Business Alliance, uh, Larry Schaefer. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we and have the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, uh, two appointments. Carla Harwell's volunteered to serve uh, as the Sheriff's Office Representative, and Joseph Cook has volunteered to serve as the Mooresville Police Department Representative. Um, is there a motion? Uh, so moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. We have two uh, committees, the Personnel Advisory Committee and the Transportation Advisory Board uh, that we are going to hold over to the uh, next meeting to uh, further review uh, the applicants. And uh, those will be uh, placed on the January 7th, January 7th agenda. Uh, finally, we have the Zoning Board of Adjustment. And uh, Commissioner Howe? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint uh, Roy West, John Allen, and Mac McCombs have volunteered to serve again, and an application has been submitted for Don West 
for the first time to serve, I believe, in the alternate position. Okay. Uh, motion uh, by Commissioner Howe uh, for those four appointments. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, now we'll move on to uh, item 11, which is unfinished business. Uh, we have a uh, an item that had been before us before, and uh, who's going to tee that up, uh, Beth, or is that? I'm going to defer to legal counsel on this one. <laughs> All right. Um, back in, I believe, October, you had a presentation um, <coughs> requesting an easement to three temporary construction easements out on the property that's formerly known as the Old Ropes Course on Bluefield Road. Um, Ms. Jones asked uh, Mr. Sleeby at the time to review the request, look at the plans, look at what they'd done. Um, I conveyed to you all his recommendation and the results of his due diligence, and which included suggesting that or recommending that if you all so choose to approve it, that you require a $25,000 bond to be posted um, by the grantee, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in order to ensure that area is stabilized. And I've drafted a motion um, to include that and also in their initial offer, the initial draft that they sent, they offered $3,000 for that temporary construction easement. So the motion includes the same. Uh, but the $25,000 bond would be held until you all were satisfied that that area was properly stabilized um, because there is a, a slope involved um, with their detention pond uh, adjacent to it. So there was an encroachment? There was an encroachment of approximately five feet. Uh, any uh, further questions? The $3,000 that they've offered uh, to pay for the TCEs, what is, that is just in is good faith? Is that to cover your calls? of legal it's whatever you want to apply it to it would I believe it go into the general fund but it's it's the purchase price for what, the easement. what is the cost for our legal to deal with this situation since we've started because they I think they've I, made some offers and this and that I and um, honestly I'd have to go back and look at that because this is this was requested about this time last year and there was quite a bit of time involved then because it also involved the storm drainage easement that was requested, the permanent storm drainage easement at the time. And at that time, you all granted the permanent storm drainage easement, but you declined to grant the temporary construction easements. They revi made some revisions, tried to reduce the area, and came back. So I, I honestly, I don't know off the top of my head how much time has been expended, but there has been time over the course of about my, a year and a half. My recommendation to the board would be that we charge for the TCEs whatever our cost has been through legal to deal with this situation from start to today and what may be anticipated along with the uh, bond if needed. That way at least we're made whole for allowing them, uh, granting them an easement. Can we make the motion this evening to say $25,000 bond, $3,000 uh, for the temporary construction and easement, or up to the amount that we have invested in legal fees? Yes. Can we make that as a form of a motion tonight to grant this? Are you okay with that? I, th I think we ought to recover our costs. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we ought to recover our costs at a minimum, or a mi minimum of three thousand, or recover our costs mm -hmm. up to the for legal fees. The legal costs that we've incurred. Is that still not recovering staff time either? That's just no, legal costs. Recover staff time. May May I make yeah. a, a quick question? So, three thousand dollars, or up to what we've. What we so the minimum would be three thousand. Uh, Correct. Three thousand. The minimum would be three thousand. The maximum would be the actual cost incurred from legal, not from staff, legal. but just okay. from staff legal. legal. Okay. Okay. But that works. Plus the twenty-five thousand dollars bond to assure that everything is stabilized before they leave. Okay. Is that fair? Ready to make the motion? Yeah. Ready. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to grant three temporary construction easements as depicted on mm -hmm. that <clears throat> that certain survey data at 82819 prepared by ESP Associates to Bluefields of LKN LLC for the minimum purchase price of three thousand dollars or up to the cost of legal services year to date. Related to this, pro related to this uh, property, 
and contingent upon the posting of a $25,000 bond or a letter of credit for the benefit of Idaho County to be held until all disturbed areas have been stabilized to the satisfaction of Idaho County. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, all, all opposed? Mic sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, thank you, uh, Lisa, for the year's worth of <laughs> toil and trouble. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, uh, today uh, is our second meeting of the month, and it's a public comment period. Uh, any one signed up? I've had no one sign up. I would inquire of anyone that's in attendance if you would like to avail yourself of this opportunity. Five minutes of fame. Okay. Uh, seeing and hearing none, then we will move on to uh, new business. Item 13, which should, uh, is a discussion, uh, an, an update by Commissioner Robertson on the I-77 quarter. Yeah. Um, today there was a meeting in Charlotte. Um, I, the I-77 quarter study, part of that study is to receive public input. Okay. Um, the, the official effort hasn't begun, but the effort to do that has begun. <clears throat> the, um, as part of the meeting today, kind of the guidance that I gave them, because right now they're working under, oh, you know, they have these big maps of I-77 from Rock Hill all the way to Statesville, and kind of the approach is, wow, you know, where are your problem, where, where, are, the, where are your the spots on this in this area in the zone, you know, that are painful to you. What would you like to see? And it's, it was, was kind of like uh, Santa's, you know, going to the mall to sit on Santa's lap and tell him everything that you wanted. And I think that that gives a false impression of what's going to happen next. And so my request to them was my suggestion and my, and my request was, and I, and I shared a, an experience of what we had done in Idaho County. Many years ago, we, um, we were going to do a survey across the different parts of Idaho County to determine what did people want as far as parks and recreation. When they met the first time, it was like, well, what do you want? Would you like baseball fields? Yeah. Soccer fields? Yeah. Football fields, yeah. Walking trails, yeah. Everything. Swimming pools, yeah. They wanted everything. And they came back and go, look, look at all this stuff that everybody wants. Well, that's not really fair. I mean, everybody, listen, if you did a survey of the five members of the Board of Commissioners and said, how many of y'all would like the Heisman Trophy, we'd all say, yeah. <laughs> I'll take that call. <laughs> so... So back then what we did was we said, wait a minute, this really doesn't give us an accurate picture of what we could do and should do. We said, how about if you word these things? So, because in order to, to get them, we probably would have to raise, uh, to get a couple million dollars, we need a, a penny on the tax rate. Is, would you be willing to add a penny or a couple pennies on the tax rate to get these things? The results of the survey kind of flipped from 80% wanted all this stuff and 20% said, I don't care or I don't, or no. So 20% said, yeah, and 80% said, no. Those aren't the exact figures, so don't, so don't take that to the mic. But the main thing was is that the results of the survey were vastly different. We know that there's approximately $8 billion, is it, of road needs that are on the books yesterday chasing about a billion dollars in funding. So for us to go out for the, for, and this is part of the CRTP, to go out and present it of what would you like um, you know we can add, you know we could add another half a billion dollars of stuff, and I think it leads the, to the false conclusion or expectation that somehow 
people are going to get it and worse yet that they're going to get it in a year or two. I mean, for me, the success of, of this quarter study is that we might get additional lanes on the, on the plan, in the queue, and funded to Troutman while I'm still alive. Not while I'm still working. You know, if I, if I work for another five to seven years, there's not going to be six lanes to Troutman. I'll never live to see six lanes to Statesville. <coughs> if, but success is to get them on the list. Is to, is to get them on the list, get them on the plan, so that at least maybe my kids can, can get on it. That's kind of a sad, that's not very, people say, well, you're not very ambitious. No, but I am being very realistic. Okay? <laughs> And we need to get realistic or else you're going to be paying toll lanes to go from Statesville to Trout. And, and we, don't want to, we don't want to do that. So my, my kind of report to the board is, first of all, is I've asked, I've asked them to kind of take a little bit different approach as to not mislead the public that just because they come to a meeting or say that they would like to see I-77 widen or 150 widen or Highway 3 widen, that somehow we're, the county commissioners or even the members of the General Assembly are on the hook to make that happen. That's not how it works. That's just not how it works. And that part of their outreach has to be a bit of education about how roads are funded and about how the, the limitation for that funding is real. So I've done that. I spoke on behalf of our board, just wanted to let you know, this is really about managing expectations <clears throat> um, because the, the, the road funding picture is not likely to improve much. The second part of that, which, um, which I've said this all to you kind of privately or in, in, in individual conversations, maybe even mentioned it in our um, <clears throat> during our retreat, but the funding formula for roads, and this will go for everything that's in this I-77 quarter study, it's going to go for everything, period, in our county. The way that the state of North Carolina now weights road projects, and I'm not talking about resurfacing and maintaining roads. But to get new roads or big expansions or big road projects, there's this numerical formula so that they can put a number to a category and, and come up with an overall number for a project. They put those in an Excel spreadsheet. They hit sort, and the you know those with the biggest number of priority points is what they're going to do. One of the factors for weighting projects is how much money the local entities, the local governments, or private business could do it, how much they're going to pony up and contribute. Now, five years ago, ten years ago, we didn't do this. It, this wasn't even on our budget, okay? We still don't have a line item in our budget that says matching funds or local contributions to get a road bill. It's not there. I, I would say to this board, and I, and I share this with, and I wanted to do this at 7 o'clock as public record, Iredell County used to not, it was not in our scope, it was not what we did, we did not allocate money to build roads. There were times that we allocated a little bit of money to widen a lane or to do something relative to economic development for a business, but we historically didn't go in and say, we're going we're gonna to go widen Highway 115 
I'm just making make an example. Looking forward to the next decade, that's going to be part of what we have to do. Is, is Mooresville is already there, Statesville is already there, and of course they always come and say we want you to share in the responsibility or, or help us do the matching funds or whatever. So I, I, I would say that I think looking forward, and we can, we can call it economic development. I prefer to be very transparent and just say, say we're going to probably have to create like a capital reserve fund for local matches and local contributions to get roads built. If we do not do this, you're going to see other communities get the road money. And you go, well, this isn't fair. I'll agree with you. It's not fair. I didn't write the rules. That's the way the rules are, and we're going to have to play by it. Which means, which means that if there's now a new slice of our budgetary pie that's going for paying for roads, that means that everybody else who's now got a certain size of the budget pie may see there's be less than it would have otherwise been. And that's bad news. That's sad news. So anyway, so that's my kind of, I would like to report that to the board. I believe we owe the taxpayers honesty. I think I owe my fellow board members honesty. How much should we start putting into this fund? You know, I mean, I, it, it's going to be in the, if we start next year, you know, it could be in the hundreds, plural, of thousands of dollars. If we don't start putting that money away, then when it's time to do some of these projects, we're going to have to pony up closer to a million or more. Okay? I mean, that's, that's significant when you look at how much additional we collect in tax revenue in a year. If all of a sudden in one year we got to have a million, I mean that's that that impact. That, there's no way that doesn't impact schools. That, there's no way that doesn't impact salaries and everybody else's budget. Kind of a little bit of the bear of bad news. The good news is they're looking at I-77. They're trying to they're they're recognizing that that it needs addressed. That's the good news, okay? And uh, so, bad news is we're gonna whatever they come up with before it's all said and done with, we'll be writing some of the checks. So, with that, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank uh, Commissioner Robertson. Uh, he attends a monthly meeting for CRTPO uh, in Charlotte and has to. Uh, uh, Negotiate I-77 down and back, <coughs> and uh, it's uh, always very highly motivated when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, but it's important to have a seat at the table, and uh, uh, we're fortunate to have uh, planning staff that is uh, well aware uh, and fluent in the uh, funding formula, foreign funding, funding formulas. Form uh, and these algorithms and all that, that, uh, you know, there's ways to package them and segment them to make them score higher to be, uh, but you got to have a plan to begin with. And that's one of the things we're going to be working on with our uh, municipalities is coming up with an Iredell County transportation plan that will inform our uh, land use plan for the future. I got one quick question, Ken. If, if, if counties do start participating, and we understand that other counties may, they are. So that puts us in a direct competition at that point. Is it true that only the state and the municipalities share in power bill money, gas tax money? Mm -hmm. Correct. Is that yeah, 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 we yeah because we have no. I mean, you know, we don't have the ability to pave anything. We don't have the authority. Right. Okay, I want right. to be real clear. If Iredell County said, ah, you know what? <clears throat> We're not waiting on the feds. We're going to widen I-77 I from exit 36 to, um, to 42. It's there right away. Rots a ruck. No, Unfortunately, at some happen. point, you're going to pay to play. Or those you projects are going somebody that will. <clears throat> again, I bring it back to our conversation that we had 
uh, in our pre-agenda meeting. We are seven years into the baby boomers hitting age 60. We're in the seventh year of 14 years of the baby boomer generation reaching age 67. That means that they're on Medicare, they're receiving Social Security, and they're driving trillion dollar, and, and it's not their fault, don't, don't get me wrong, but that's a function of why we have record low unemployment, a pretty good economy, and a trillion dollar debt, okay? And we have seven years of baby boomers that have yet to retire. The feds aren't gonna be coming with the highway money like they once did. The state is the same way. I mean, it, this stuff is rolling downhill. I mean, we're seeing it with education dollars, with economic incentives. I mean, this is just, we're a broken record. We're a broken record. But and, uh, and unfortunately, I think in the future, you'll see the amount of the investment on a local level will put will have will play a big part in the positioning of the priority of those projects. I, right now, that 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 weighting criteria is small enough to where it hasn't hurt us. Yep. Um, that will not stay the same. Right. There are certain categories uh, when you have, and I forget what it's called, but it's basically dollars that come available on a short term that, that you know, different entities could sort of bid for. And clearly in those, uh, you've got to be willing to pony up some local match to get your project uh, on the board. They're relatively small projects, but, you know, we all, you know, a roundabout here, uh, a stoplight over here, uh, you know, a turn lane and all these things that make a big difference. Uh, if they're not in a municipality, then, then the county's the only name uh, in the game. So uh, for those particular items, uh, those are the low-hanging fruit where a fund would be helpful to get those projects funded. But it's like anything, it's like, you know, it's a 10% or 20% or 25% kind of uh, contribution. Okay, well, thank you very much. Any further questions, comments? Okay, we'll move on then to the county manager's report. Thank you, Chairman Mallory. Uh, just a few reminders. One, the Statesville Library will be closed from January the 6th to January the 11th. We will be relocating everything back down to the uh, bottom floor and setting up that, that children's area again. We're really excited about the new space and we'll be moving and, and putting everything back. So uh, they are gonna close to make sure that it's difficult to relocate and move shelves and do things with patrons there. The other branches will be open, but the Statesville branch will be closed that week and then they will reopen Monday, January the 13th. Property tax listings will begin to go out January the 2nd, or actually, excuse me, property tax listings have gone, the forms have gone out, and they, the listing period is January the 2nd and will end January the 31st. Just a reminder, this is a statutory requirement that every person that owns taxable property in Iredell County must list their property during the listing period. So uh, if anybody has any, any questions, please contact the tax office or they have information, very detailed information on the website. You can go to the website and learn more about that. And then uh, just- The last day to pay your taxes is January- Six, no. Fifth, fifth or sixth? Fifth, fifth. Fifth, January the fifth. The last day to pay without penalty is January the fifth. And then uh, finally, county offices will be closed for the holidays uh, next week, Tuesday, the, December the 24th through Thursday, December the 26th. And I, I do wanna thank our library staff and patrons for their uh, hard work and understanding of the uh, very quick move that we had to make in order to uh, deal with a uh, contamination issue from uh, old uh, uh, vapors uh, from uh, dry cleaners and solvent and uh, they, the, the staff were just real troopers over the course of a weekend they moved everything from the children's area and the, and the offices and all that downstairs mm -hmm. up the genealogical society moved and displaced twice 
uh, and uh, and we didn't lose any functionality. It was Absolutely. it was crowded and a little confusing for all those different elements. And now they'll be back in place and uh, in a uh, completely uh, uh, protected environment. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, anything further? We have one item on closed session. Uh, attorney uh, client discussion pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11 subsection A3. We uh, previously held a uh, shorter closed session on uh, some items regarding economic development pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11 subsection A4 and there was nothing uh, to uh, report out for any action this evening. So we will now uh, Adjourn into closed session.
uh, resume open session. Uh, nothing to report out of uh, a lengthy attorney-client session. Um, is there uh, anything further to come before the commission? Hearing and seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? I would like to make a, before I make a motion to adjourn, I'd like us to keep uh, Commissioner Norman in our prayers. He's under the weather. And I'd like to wish everybody on our behalf and the staff's behalf and the manager a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. By acclamation. Do we need to vote on that? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a long way of motion for adjourned. I think we can all agree. Amen. Amen. Aye. 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 Aye.